So let's get uh, straight on with the first experiment. And that is quite simply to light up the bulb, switch it on using the MOSFET as the switch. So the first MOSFET I'm going to experiment with is this quite old uh, IRF Z44N by International Rectifier. Um, but it's got quite a good low on resistance. You can see that it says RDS on is 17.5 milliohms. That's uh, 0 0.0175 ohms. Um, it can handle 55 volts between drain and source. That is when it's switched off. You'd never have 55 volts across drain and source when it's on. And uh, it uh, is rated for a drain current of 49 amps. But there are a number of conditions attached to that drain current. So one of the first things you look at with a MOSFET is the on resistance. We want to use this as a switch, so we want it to have as low an on resistance as possible. So the third item down there, RDS on, the drain to source on resistance, 17.5 milliohms, but it requires a voltage across gate and source of 10 volts and it's specified at a current of 25 amps. So the data sheet is telling us to put at least 10 volts onto the gate of the MOSFET relative to the source to achieve that low on resistance of 17.5 uh, milliohms. Um, now in this circuit, we conveniently have 12 volts on the uh, positive side of the battery relative to what we'll call zero volts on the negative side of the battery. So I'm gonna connect the gate to positive 12 volts to turn this MOSFET on. And there it is, the light comes on. Now I should point out that this is an N-channel MOSFET and it's N-channel MOSFETs that require a positive gate voltage with respect to source to turn them on. So how do we turn this thing off? Do we simply remove the gate from 12 volts? No, that doesn't actually work. The gate is insulated. This is an insulated gate field effect transistor. The wire running into the gate is connected to a metal plate, but then there's an insulating layer between that and the rest of the MOSFET. So actually, this yellow wire is effectively disconnected at both ends, and sitting on it is a static charge of 12 volts. Sitting there, it can't go anywhere. It can't flow off this end of the wire, it can't flow into the MOSFET and dissipate through there. So the only way we're going to be able to turn this MOSFET off is if we remove that static charge by shorting the gate down to zero volts. And that's the point where the source is connected. So we're going to short gate and source together. And I put a little extra link wire here, which is a continuation of zero volts. And I'm going to short the gate to that. And that's the method for turning the lamp off. So let's just go through that again. To turn it on, we put it to the high voltage, 12 volts in this case, but then it stays on. To turn it off, we short it down to ground. Now let's have another look at the data sheet because there's an interesting thing on the uh, circuit diagram of the MOSFET here. It's this diode. There's a diode running directly between drain and source, and that's called the body diode. It's not there for any particular reason, it's just a side effect of the way the transistor is constructed. But we do have to be aware that it's there, and it's quite interesting to take a look at how it works. So the body diode is a bit like having this enormous great silicon diode connected directly across drain and source. And on an N-channel MOSFET it's this way around with the cathode connected to drain and the anode connected to source. Now you can see that in this circuit current flows this way so the diode doesn't do anything. No current's going to flow through the diode. But if we turn this MOSFET round, that diode's going to conduct. So this way round, the body diode is forward biased. So current can flow through the body diode and the light is on. And I've intentionally shorted gate to source so that the MOSFET is not on, just to show that the current flowing through this is purely uh, the effect of the body diode. Now this MOSFET is starting to get warm and it's not surprising because that diode has a significant volt drop. It's about 0.7 volts. It's quite a powerful diode. It's actually rated in the datasheet at 49 amps. 
but it's not a sophisticated diode. It's not like a shock key. So it has quite a high voltage drop. Now with a voltage across this device and with current flowing through it, there are going to be some watts dissipated inside this device. So there's going to be some heat generated. So I thought I'd measure that diode volt drop and it is 0.7 volts. And that explains why the diode's getting warm. I'm now going to attempt to uh, measure the temperature of the MOSFET stroke diode. So I'm getting a reading of about 50 degrees. So it is getting quite warm. So then I wondered, is it possible to now take the gate of the MOSFET up to 12 volts, switch the MOSFET on, and actually get the MOSFET to short out its own body diode? Let's see what happens. If I take this and put it on the positive, back to the negative, back to the positive, you can see on the meter that um, it's now gone down to uh, 30 millivolts. So yes, it does appear to have shorted out the diode. And when I put this on the negative, the bulb gets ever so slightly dimmer. When I put it on the positive, the bulb gets slightly brighter. You might not be able to see that on camera, but that's what's happening here. And now, of course, current is flowing through the MOSFET the wrong way. We're actually flowing from source through to drain, and that's not the direction that MOSFETs are intended to be used. So it would appear that a MOSFET is actually a bi-directional device, although it's a fairly impractical use of a MOSFET this way around because it's conducting through its body diode in any case. Now lastly, I wanted to uh, show what happens if we go much higher current. So I put in this H7 55 watt car headlight bulb, and I was hoping that the MOSFET would get hot, but it actually didn't. In fact, what happened was this plug, the cigar lighter plug on the battery, uh, decided it couldn't handle the current and uh, it's all melted inside. So I'm just going to have to talk through the bit about uh, paralleling MOSFETs up. So one thing you can do with MOSFETs that you can't do with bipolar transistors is just wire lots of them in parallel. And you get this um, in motor speed controllers for radio controlled models. You'll see that lots of MOSFETs are simply just wired in parallel. Um, but although there are four MOSFETs here, it's not safe to say that you can uh, put four times the amount of current through it because you can see that the middle two MOSFETs there are sandwiched in and they're going to get hotter than the outer two. So you do have to derate the current rating a little bit if you're going to do this sort of thing. So that's an N-channel MOSFET wired into the low side of the circuit. But it's not always convenient to put switching in the low side of the circuit. In fact, if you think of this as a circuit in a car, we've got a, a lamp here and the battery here. Generally speaking, the chassis of a car is used to connect all of the negative connections together. So you wouldn't normally switch the negative side of the circuit. What we really want to do is put a switch in the positive side of the circuit. And for that, we're going to look at P-channel MOSFETs in the third part of this tutorial.